A string of arsons and burglaries at homes around central Kentucky have people living in rural areas worried tonight. So what can you do to keep from becoming a victim? Tornadoes have touched down in parts of the Plain States tonight, causing some deaths and a lot of damage. Kentucky police officers who died in the line of duty over the last year will be honored this weekend in Washington, D.C. How you can help a group also making the trip to provide escorts to the fallen officers' families. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening to you. It looks like we'll be heading into a stormy pattern across the bluegrass starting tomorrow. And some of those storms could even be strong or severe. We begin tonight with our chief meteorologist Chris Bailey and your no wait weather forecast. Yeah, guys, all afternoon we've been kind of teasing our skies with some showers and some thunderstorms. A little light rain out there right now on your Defender Radar Network. But let's look to the west and southwest of us. West of Interstate 65, notice the rain train beginning to pick up a little steam now from Owensboro down to Bowling Green. Some of those showers will get in here middle of the night. Now we can start to get in on some stronger thunderstorms just to the west of the Mississippi River, pushing into Fulton County. That's far western Kentucky. Those are damaging wind producers. There's even a little spin showing up in the radar presentation there. Weak area of low pressure, and that's a sign that that little thunderstorm cluster may try to hold together as it rolls its way toward the east and the northeast over the next 20, uh, 12 to 24 hours. Then we have the actual storm system that's well off to our west. Out ahead of this, big outbreak of severe weather, deadly outbreak of tornadoes into parts of Oklahoma a little earlier. This whole mess over the next few days will continue to press across central and eastern Kentucky. Now, your short term look at the hour by hour future radar suggesting that line of thunderstorms now pressing into western Kentucky gets in here around the middle of tomorrow morning. So as we go through the day, it's a muggy one out there. Temperatures low 60s to begin the day, mid to upper 70s to end things. When I come back at 11:13, a brand new hour by hour forecast, guys, tracking not only the strong thunderstorm threat, but the possibility of heavy rain. Some new numbers coming your way in just a few minutes. Chris, you mentioned Oklahoma tonight. At least two people are dead there after tornadoes touched down. Authorities say one man died in Johnston County and another man died in Garvin County. Those are both south of Oklahoma City. They say there's extensive damage to homes in the town of Wynwood after a large tornado touched down there. That tornado was caught on tape. Police are now trying to help those who lost their homes, and they expect it to be a long night. We expect roads to be closed uh, uh, for maybe several hours. We will try to get the roadways open as soon as they are safe, uh, and, and we have uh, you know the homes uh, secured. The National Weather Service also says tornadoes touched down in Nebraska and Iowa, and baseball-sized hail fell near Lincoln, Nebraska. Tonight, another fire has been connected to a string of burglaries and arsons across central Kentucky. In the last two weeks, six homes in rural areas have been damaged or destroyed. The latest fire happened this morning on Jacks Creek Road in Madison County. Police have connected it to arsons in Fayette, Jessamyn, Scott, and Garrett counties. These crimes have many people who live in rural areas asking what they can do to protect their homes. Monique Blair has our top story at 11. I mean, it's crazy that you just can't leave your house unless you, I mean, somebody could just literally just burn your house down. Wendy Bennett lives in rural Madison County, just down the street from the most recent home that police say was burned by a possible serial arsonist. The sixth home set on fire after being burglarized in less than two weeks. So as far as who is at risk, state police say it essentially could be anyone in central Kentucky, especially those who are not at home during the day on weekdays. But you know, someone out there knows and you someone may just stumble across this, these, these people while they're casing out one of these places. WKYT's officer Don, a former Lexington police detective, says in addition to being extra vigilant, there are ways you can protect yourself against this crime. Monitored is always best because a monitored system is exactly that. You know, there, if, if something happens, the first responders are called, whether it's fire, whether it's burglary. Officer Don also says a more inexpensive route is to use internet based surveillance at your home. That way, even when you're away, you can check in. But it's not only you 
you and I who need to be aware. Fire departments are also on high alert. The Whitehall Volunteer Fire Department, for example, is bringing in extra firefighters to the department during the hours of 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. on weekdays because they say that's when the majority of these fires have happened. There are only so many detectives, so many patrol officers out there, but everyone needs to consider themselves on patrol. In Madison County, it's like you got to watch your house because you just don't ever know. Monique Blair, WKYT. State police say they met with several police and fire departments today to share notes on the fires and pull together resources. They hope that will help find who's responsible. We have some new information tonight about the case against an Owsley County woman accused of killing both her parents. Today, a judge set a $1 million bond for Lynette McQuinn. She is charged with murder and evidence tampering. On Friday, state police say she shot her parents, John and Ada McQuinn, in their home near Boonville. Lynette McQuinn will have a court hearing on May 26th. New tonight, the father of Knox County murder victim says he talked to the suspect the day before the crime. Police say that Shane Mills shot and killed in his home last Wednesday. State police later arrested Richard Brown and charged him with murder. They say Brown admitted shooting Mills twice. Mills' father says Brown was in his store last Tuesday asking questions about the store and when it closed. He also says when Mills' mother called the home after hearing gunshots Wednesday night, Brown answered the phone and said he was there to fix a sink. I wanted him to hang him if he can or give him nature cheer because he killed my son, cold bloody murder. He had no gun, he had no shot. He was most likely asleep. So far, police have not said what they think led up to the shooting. This weekend, the names of six fallen Kentucky police officers will be added to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C. Families of all six officers are expected to attend the ceremony, and a motor squad from Kentucky will escort them. As Garrett Weimer tells us, new at 11, a police officer is asking for your help to make sure that motor squad can pay for the trip. Families of six fallen Kentucky police officers will converge on our nation's capital this week to honor their loved one's sacrifice. Among their escorts while they're there, eight police officers from Kentucky themselves. The Kentucky survivors will have a, have a good escort. To the law enforcement community, escorting those families is an honor, but it's also expensive. The gasoline going up, gasoline coming back. Of course, they haul the motorcycles. They've got gasoline while they're there. Then they have motel rooms and they have food and things that they have to do while they're there. Joe Gilliland is a detective in Stanford. He's also a part of Kentucky's Concerns of Police Survivors, a group that offers support to families of fallen officers and Kentucky's Blue Knights Law Enforcement Motorcycle Club. He says the groups want to help eight officers from an agency here in Kentucky which does not want to be recognized who will provide an escort for the families in D.C. These fellows, they, they escort them everywhere they go. They work hard for the week they're up there, and it's just not right that they have to pay out of their pocket for, this, for them doing this work. Gilliland hopes folks can chip in as a way of showing support. He says he hopes they raise enough not only to cover their expenses for this year, but to have money left over that can go toward next year as well. In Stanford, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. And we have a link to that GoFundMe page on WKYT.com and the WKYT News app. Just look for this story. Among the Kentuckians who will be honored at the memorial this weekend, Richmond Police Officer Daniel Ellis. He was killed in the line of duty last November. Richmond Police plan to send 26 current officers to Washington, D.C. They'll leave Wednesday. They say they're glad the entire country will know about Officer Ellis's sacrifice. 60 years from now, I can go up there with maybe my kids or my grandkids, and I can say, "Hey, that's a hero right there. Uh, that was that was uh, that was my friend, and he's a hero." Berea Police, EKU Police, and the Madison County Sheriff's Office will help cover emergency calls in Richmond. All the group of officers is in Washington D.C. New tonight, investigators now think they know what caused the death of a woman at Lake Cumberland over the weekend. They found 52-year-old Wendy Augustine dead Wednesday afternoon near the Lake Cumberland State Dock Marina in Russell County. The Russell County coroner says an autopsy was done today and the preliminary cause of death is accidental drowning. Augustine was from Ohio. Also new tonight, investigators are trying to figure out what caused a man's death in a Wayne County cave. They say they found 57-year-old Anthony Ersman dead last night about 200 feet into a cave off Adderholt Road. 
The Wayne County coroner says Ersman was an experienced caver and they did not find any signs of trauma on his body. Investigators say they do not suspect any foul play in his death. Presidential candidate Hillary Clinton will be returning to Kentucky tomorrow. The front runner for the Democratic nomination will hold an invitation only event at the Family Care Center off Red Mile Road tomorrow afternoon. She'll then go to Louisville for a public rally at Louisville Slugger Field that begins at 6:15 tomorrow night. Clinton's opponent Bernie Sanders held rallies in Lexington and Louisville last week. Tomorrow, West Virginia holds its primary. Kentucky's primary is a week from tomorrow. A section of Interstate 75 that's seen many crashes over the years will be widened. The road fund in the recently approved state budget includes $100 million to add two more lanes to 12 miles of I-75 in Rockcastle County. In January, a snowstorm shut down that stretch of interstate for more than 12 hours. Governor Bevin signed the road fund bill in Mount Vernon this morning. County leaders say a wider interstate will be safer and lead to more economic developments. Well, since I-75 is one of the greatest uh, roads uh, of, of traffic volume in the United States, you know, it deserves attention. Construction will take place in phases between mile markers 55 and 69. A teenager dies after investigators say she was attacked in a bathroom of her school. And tonight, three of her classmates face charges. The latest on that case in nine minutes. And then the battle over North Carolina's controversial restroom law will likely be heading to court soon. It's time to wake up. You've got things to do. Mouths to feed, work to get done. It's another Kentucky morning. And Kentucky mornings start here. Good morning. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. You don't have time to waste, so we don't waste your time. Simple as that. Breaking and overnight news, weather to plan your day, plus traffic you can take with you. Make WKYT this morning part of your Kentucky morning. Weekdays from 4.30 to 7 on WKYT. I dropped it on the floor, and he stepped on it. No matter how you broke your smartphone, there's only one smart way to fix it. Batteries plus bulbs. Batteries plus bulbs. Trust the plus. Clients come into the office. The government has said, no, I don't believe you. You're not disabled. The major problem with Social Security disability is that most people who sign up are denied at the initial level. If your claim's denied, don't give up. Call us immediately. We'll appeal your case. We can do an effective job of representing you that will get you the benefits that you deserve. Call Morgan, Collins, and Yeast. 1-800-55-WILDCAT. Ram's continued leadership is eye-opening. Like Ram 3500 with the best towing, best torque, the best payload, and Ram 1500 with the best fuel economy. It's no wonder more people are driving Ram trucks than ever before. Join us now during the Ram Drive and Discover event. What we do is not about sickness. It's about living. Because you were made to live and live well. Let us show you how care is supposed to be. Lexington Clinic. Your doctors for life. Have something that needs investigating? Email us or call the WKYT Investigates tip line. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Well, not a very pretty Monday that we're wrapping up across the Bluegrass State, but at least for many of us, it was a fairly dry afternoon and evening outside of a little spotty shower here or there. Still a big temperature swing out there late this evening, similar to what we had earlier in the day. It is 70 in the Middlesboro. It is 59 into Covington. Somewhere in between the mid-60s show up across the I-64 corridor and points to the south. Defender Radar Network has been picking up on a little spotty raindrop here or there. Watching some rains now getting close to I-65. Severe thunderstorms are just to the west of Paducah. Some of those will try to roll in here as we go through the day tomorrow. Stationary front right on top of northern Kentucky. That is basically keeping the chilly air to the north and the warm, almost tropical air across the Ohio, Tennessee valleys back into the Plain States where we're getting some big time, strong and severe thunderstorms as of now. Across central and eastern Kentucky, the possibility is there for a strong or severe thunderstorms, especially tomorrow afternoon and evening. 
we're into the low to moderate category in terms of the impact of any possible storms tomorrow. High winds hail the primary players, but boy, we're loading up the atmosphere with a lot of moisture over the next few days. So our prediction center with a slight risk of severe weather for the areas in yellow. That includes Louisville, gets uh, into parts of Boyle County, right on top of Somerset, Pulaski County, and Southwest. That's where at least the current thinking is that we'll have the better chance for some severe weather tomorrow, tomorrow evening. Marginal risk, central and eastern Kentucky, means there's a risk, but it is a lower one compared to areas to the west of us. Tomorrow, at any one point, you can get a thunderstorm where you live. So don't just look at a timeline here and say, ah, oh, no storm here, better chance here. At any point tomorrow, the skies could open up on you. The best chance for severe weather would come during the late afternoon and early evening hours with temperatures into the mid to the upper 70s. Hour by hour forecast now. We take you through the day tomorrow, and those temperatures jump up, and then all of a sudden start to come back down as some thunderstorms rumble across the region through tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. What I'm seeing on the models later tomorrow night into Wednesday morning is we're trying to pick up on some stronger thunderstorms that can put down a ton of rain somewhere across the area. What I'm, you're noticing this big blob of red here. A little earlier, that run was a little farther to the north with that. The important thing to look at when you're talking about a computer model run is consistency. They have this heavy rain and thunderstorm complex late tomorrow night and Wednesday morning setting up somewhere across the area. They just kind of jump around a little bit. Then by Wednesday afternoon, skies may try to clear briefly as temperatures make a run toward the low 80s. Following that up, the threat for some more thunderstorms around as we go into our Thursday ahead of that front. If temperatures hit the low and mid 80s, we're talking about severe thunderstorms rumbling across the area as we go to Thursday night and Friday morning. That same computer model run is spitting out a general one, two, or local three inch rains. Now, computer models and thunderstorms don't go hand in hand very well. They don't pick up on at least the small scale down uh, or the downpours that you can get that can really up those rain totals. So over the next few days, guys, showers, thunderstorms will be with us on and off. If I'm picking a dry day, it is Friday as of now, the upper 60s to around 70. A chilly day, Saturday may struggle to get to 60 with some showers and thunderstorms then, too. You were quite busy this afternoon. You had a great turnout we in did. the weather folks, right? Folks were coming out to uh, the Euclid uh, Avenue Kroger all afternoon long. Uh, we were there through. We put in overtime. We stayed until 730 to make sure everybody got a weather Good radio. deal, though. And Twister tomorrow night, Kentucky Theater. There you awesome. go. Awesome. Thank you, sir. The large sound system known as Big Bertha took its final bow at Rupp Arena today. We'll show you the send-off ceremony in eight minutes. Jackpot sequence has been initiated. Prepare for current jackpot. Tuesday's Mega Millions jackpot is $150 million. If time is infinite, why is there never enough of it? A John Deere One Family Tractor with Quick Park lets you attach and go. IMatch Quick Hitch gives you more time for what you love. So it takes less work to do more work. Auto Connect Drive Over Mower Deck? Done. They're not making any more land, but there's plenty of time. If you know where to look, Limestone Farm Lawn and Worksite delivers rock solid value. Make Limestone your choice for John Deere. At Hare Wind, we've been helping people for 125 years. If you've been injured in a life changing accident, we can help. Contact us at helpingkentucky.com. Hare Wind. Visit helpingkentucky.com. At Paul Miller Ford, we want all our customers to drive happy. I certainly would recommend Paul Miller to friends and family. The staff and the service is exceptional. Oh, I love it. it that Eagle Boost is, is really nice. That's why we're honored to win our third Ford President's Award for customer satisfaction. This one I buy now will be my fourth F-150. Come visit our President's Award sales event and get 0% financing for 60 months on Ford F-150s like Larry's. Point click drive at paulmillerford.com. All summer long. Your road to refreshment leads to Speedway. And now that Speedway's grown throughout the Midwest, Northeast, and Southeast, nobody has a handle on your summer fun better than Speedway. From the sunny shores of Florida to New York City, from the Carolinas to the New England coast, your road to refreshment leads to Speedway. And now Speedway's celebrating 25 years supporting Children's Miracle Network hospitals. Donate today. We're on your way to convenience stores of Speedway. Now, a 32-ounce Speedy Freezer Fountain drinks just 89 cents. 
Bluegrass RV has more than 300 new and used RVs in stock. So many ways to bring indoor comfort to your outdoor adventures. Financing options with payments so low you can have fun year-round. Bluegrass RV is celebrating new owners and new management at our grand opening event Saturday, May 21st. Meet stars from Kentucky's 96 NCAA championship team from 10 till noon. Free barbecue, rain or shine. Come see us on North Broadway in Lexington, where good times begin. 19 pool tables and a full bar. Only at Silver Q on New Circle Road. Really sad story here. New tonight, three high school students from Wilmington, Delaware, faced charges over the death of a classmate. Police say a 16-year-old died after being attacked in a bathroom at the school. Kenneth Gregg has the latest on the investigation. A 16-year-old is charged with criminally negligent homicide for the beating that killed her classmate Amy Joyner Francis. Delaware prosecutors allege the teenager struck Joyner Francis during a confrontation in the school bathroom on April 21st. Authorities want the 16-year-old to be tried as an adult. Prosecutors say two other teens allegedly helped plan the attack. They are charged with conspiracy. A spokesperson said the charges do not bring the family any peace. Their greatest concern is that Amy will never come back, and they're very caring people and God-fearing people, so they're also concerned about the fact that three other families are affected. The medical examiner said Joyner Francis had a pre-existing condition and died of sudden cardiac death, but added the stress of the physical assault caused the deadly cardiac incident. So far, authorities don't know why the assault took place. Kenneth Craig, CBS News. The Delaware Department of Justice says there is video of the attack that clearly shows only one of the girls hit the victim. That student, a 16-year-old, has been charged with criminally negligent homicide and could face up to eight years in prison. New tonight, two lawsuits have been filed over a North Carolina law that restricts which public restrooms transgender people can use. The U.S. Justice Department sued the state after North Carolina's governor refused to change the law. Hours earlier, North Carolina sued the federal government over the law, challenging the government's claims that the law is a civil rights violation. The Justice Department said some federal funding to the state could be taken away unless the law is changed. A final salute today for a piece of Rupp Arena history that's been there since the very beginning. The speaker cluster known as Big Bertha was taken out of service and lowered to the ground this afternoon for the final time. The theme song from 2001, A Space Odyssey, played as Big Bertha was lowered. It's the same song broadcast from the speakers when the first public tours of Rupp Arena were given all the way back in 1976. Replacing the sound system is part of our $15 million tech upgrade uh, and video and audio upgrade that's ongoing throughout the summer. Oh, the new upgrades are scheduled to be finished before the next UK basketball season begins in the fall. We love when we have happy updates to pass along to you. And tonight we have one from a story that we first brought you in March. When I first introduced you to Ashley Grills of Georgetown, she was 30 weeks pregnant with her first child and fighting ovarian cancer. She was undergoing chemo and would finish right before the birth of her little girl. Well, we are happy to tell you that Ashley gave birth to Caroline May on April 29th, and she shared these newborn pictures with us. Mom and daughter are doing fine. Ashley is done with chemo, and in four weeks, she tells me she will have her first set of scans to see if the cancer is gone. But she told me by text that she is precious and she is the reason why she is here. So welcome, Caroline May, into the world. Does not get any better than mm -mm. that, a healthy baby. Yeah. All right. Could the Cats be playing a Thursday night game this fall, Rob? Well, that question was raised late this afternoon. We will tell you what we know about it. And the U.K. women's basketball team just keeps taking hits. Another one today. Stay with us. Sports is next. Get WKY team news and weather updates on Rewind 105.5. With a heavy-duty welded steel deck and exclusive smooth track steering, the Hustler Raptor Zero Turn Mower doesn't play around. It's got the power to turn your weekend to-do list into your weekend to-done list. The legendary Hustler Raptor family starting at just $27.99. Tools, not toys. Get your Hustler mower at Huss Equipment in Nicholasville and Valley Farm Equipment in Science Hill. If you've been injured in an automobile accident, don't give a written or recorded statement until you speak to us. Visit ForThePeople.com. Morgan & Morgan. For the people.
Are you tired of juggling your finances and can't afford those remodeling projects? Ceramic tiles starting at 59 cents a square foot. Come on down to Surplus Sales for some great deals. Stay connected to the news that matters to you. Like WKYT on Facebook. Tuesday's Mega Millions jackpot is $150 million and Wednesday's Powerball jackpot is $40 million. Step right up for something fun. For just a buck, the excitement's begun. The game's called Kino, and you can play it in an alley. Or you can play it with your best friend, Sally. You can play it here or there. You could play it almost anywhere. Play with many numbers or just a few. How you play is all up to you. You can put down a little or put down a lot. So what do you say? Give Kino a shot. Just pick your numbers and hope you win. And a few minutes later, you can play it again. Now you can play Kino wherever Kentucky Lottery games are sold. Fueling imagination. Funding education. My hospital bills were over 300000 As soon as I got the first bill, I contacted Becker and I was like, is there anything that you guys can do with it? And they was like, we'll handle it. They talked to the uh, hospitals to try to get it knocked down as best as they could. Whenever I found out that they knocked my bills down from about 300000 I just, I was just thankful. It's a relief. Serious, experienced results. Call the Becker Law Office. Just dial threes. $29.95. What? You're not buying this. Come on. No. Awesome. Oh, no. Too expensive. Cut it out. This is embarrassing. Ah. Come on. Open up. You never let me have any fun. Hey, what about a vacation? At Allegiant.com, we can get a great deal on flights and more, and that's fun. How come most of the time I can't get you to open up, but going on vacation is okay? One word. Allegiant. Listen to your wallet and visit Allegiant.com now. A home is the largest investment most families make. It's important to choose a contractor with the knowledge and experience to guide you through the home building process. From selecting the right lot to selecting the finishes that make your home unique, M.A. Conley Construction is by your side from beginning to end. Our experience brings value to every home we complete. M.A. Conley Construction, a Madison County family serving all of Central Kentucky. The bee writer for the Hattiesburg, Mississippi newspaper tweeting out that he's being told Kentucky's season opener with Southern Miss is moving to Thursday night, September 1st. UK saying no change has been made. The game is set for Saturday, September 3rd. But a source tells WKYT that no final decision has been made and moving the game is an option. There is interest from the university. A reported change in the Cats basketball schedule. The Cats reportedly will play Hostra in the Barclays Center in Brooklyn December 11. The game was scheduled for the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island on December 10, but the renovations there will not be ready in time. The game will be part of a doubleheader that will also feature St. John's and LIU Brooklyn. The turnover continuing for the UK women's basketball team, four star Bullet East point guard Lindsay Duvall has reopened her commitment according to multiple reports. Duvall's father telling the courier that the recent defections in the UK program is is the reason for the decommitment, but she has not eliminated UK as a possible destination. Duvall is the third recruit to decommit since the end of the season. Kentucky Derby winner Nyquist leaving Louisville early this afternoon and making the move to Baltimore for the Preakness. Trainer Doug O'Neill was not along. He's out in California. He is expected in Baltimore later in the week. Nyquist could face as many as 13 challengers at Pimlico. The field expected to fill up. The latest possibilities are Dazzling Gem and Fellowship. Dazzling Gem finished third to Gunrunner in the Louisiana Derby and fourth behind Creator in the Arkansas Derby. Fellowship finished fourth in the Pat Day Mile last weekend at Churchill Downs. He ran third to Nyquist in the Florida Derby. UK freshman closer Sean Jelly, co-freshman of the week in the SEC after his relief effort against South Carolina. Jelly went four innings of relief in the ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th innings, shutting out the seventh-ranked Gamecocks over that span. Emotionally, he said he felt like he won the SEC title. 
<laughs> that's what it felt like. Um, it was a really big moment for us, and we needed that. And um, I think uh, before uh, Rex hit that home run to tie it, South Carolina felt that they had a little bit of uh, momentum in their favor, and then it was kind of back and forth. And so I think um, that was a big momentum boost for us. It was a big momentum boost for me, for sure. Um, I needed that to get out of it, and uh, just uh, it was a great team win. The Reds opening a series with Pittsburgh and Zach Cozart leading off the game for Cincinnati with this drive over the left center field fence. A home run, one to nothing. Out of the six, Pirates lead two to one. But Joey Votto ties it up with one swing. This one has just enough to get out in left field. Tied up to two. And then in the seventh, Tucker Barnhart jumps on a pitch and sends it deep to left field. Third home run on the night for the Reds. They went back on top three to two. They hang on to win it. Billy Hamilton had three hits on the night. High school baseball, Henry Clay at Tate's Creek. Former Creekers Dorian Hairston and Javon Shelby being recognized. First inning, Jackson Beerman with a grounder to short. David McAnally knocks it down, guns down Spencer Coop at the plate. In the second, the Commodores cash in, up one to nothing. Colin Burgess getting it through the draw and infield. Samuel Lambert, Andrew Ransdell score. Tate's Creek going on to win it tonight by a final count of 5-1. to one. Over at Lafayette, fifth-ranked Madison Central and the Generals, bottom of the first. McKinley Sewell entices Jacob Abbott to hit into the 6-4-3 double play. Inning over. In the second, two outs, runners on the corners. Kyle Browning grounds to third, but the throw to first is wild. A run scores. Browning breaks for second. Logan Holland gets to third. The throw there is wild. It ricochets away. That allows Holland to come on down the line, and Browning never stopped. He comes in and scores. Lafayette goes on to win it 8-4. to four. That sports. We'll be back to wrap it up after the break. What we do is not about sickness. It's about living. All of life's moments, big and small. Each triumph and challenge. Because you were made to live and live well. And we're here to make sure you do. Let us show you how care is supposed to be. Lexington Clinic, your doctors for life. Here's a fun way to control your luck. It's a game called Kino. You can start with one buck. You pick your numbers, your odds, and your wager, and the winnings, well, they could be major. Just pick your numbers and hope you win. A few minutes later, you can play it again. Now play Kino wherever Kentucky Lottery games are sold. Hi. I need something that can keep up with all my adventures. Well, the RAV4 has available sport tune suspension. I like the sound of that. And great handling, so it can do just about anything. Thanks, Jan. This is exactly what I'm looking for. I know. Do you? Yep. Now, during Toyota time, get 0 for 60 financing on any new RAV4. Lease this RAV4 LE for $199 a month, or this first ever RAV4 hybrid for $229 a month. Here are your keys. Thanks. See you out there. Sweet. Toyota, let's go places. My dad always said God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason, to listen twice as much as you talk if you want to get things done. I moved my office from the top floor to the first floor when I was elected mayor to hear people's ideas. I took their ideas and cut waste, turned a deficit into a surplus, and helped create thousands of jobs. I'm Jim Gray, and I approve this message. Because both parties have good ideas, it just takes someone to listen. Kentucky mornings start here. Breaking and overnight news, weather to plan your day, plus traffic you can take with you. Make WKYT this morning part of your Kentucky morning. Weekdays from 4.30 to 7 on WKYT. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan, and I'm still surprised when a new client asks, is this consultation free and how do we pay you? All of our consultations are free, and you never owe us legal fees unless we're successful. It's our way of leveling the playing field against rich corporations and insurance companies. My favorite Bible story, no surprise, is David and Goliath. For 25 years, Morgan & Morgan has been here for you. Call us anytime, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. At Baptist Health, we want you to know the facts. Visit BaptistHealthDocs.com to view a video of Dr. Jennifer Fusen on minimally invasive surgery. Baptist Health Lexington. Be a healthier you. 
Come celebrate National Barbecue Month with all-you-can-eat St. Louis ribs at Sonny's Barbecue. An endless helping of sweet and smoky or dry rub ribs for just $14.99 for a limited time. Sonny's Barbecue, local pit masters since 68. Considering bankruptcy? Call Atkinson, Sims, and Kermode. Start your bankruptcy for only $78 now. Dial 859. Call ask for your free consultation. Stay connected to the news that matters to you. WKYT. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert is less than a minute away here on WKYT. Tonight's guests include Kaylee Cuoco and Dan Savage. Sounds good. Christopher, you've had a busy night with your radio. We have, yeah. Weather ra radios and, and so forth. And tomorrow's going to be a busy day for two different reasons. We've got thunderstorms coming in here and Twister tomorrow night at the Kentucky Theater. Be there, 7 o'clock for a little Weather Watchers class. Movie will start at 7.30. Movie's free. Come on Do you down. have a lot of people already signed up to come? Yeah, several hundred have signed up. We want to see more tomorrow. Have a good night.